Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and welcome to part one of my drawer building series. The first step to adding drawers to any project is figuring out what size they need to be. So in this video, we're going to discuss drawer dimensions and how to find them. Before we dive into the numbers, let's talk about some of the different styles of drawers and cabinets that you'll run into. Drawers can be either inset or overlay. Inset means that the drawers are set inside the frame like this. And overlay means that the drawers lay over the frame like this. In cabinet design, frameless means that the front edge of the cabinet box is not framed out. So the frame is just the plywood edge. This is actually how I built my shop cabinets. On the other hand, face frame cabinets have an additional frame on the front edge of the cabinet box that makes the edges a little thicker. This same concept applies to furniture as well, not just cabinet boxes. You'll also run into instances in both framed and frameless cabinets and furniture where the individual boxes are framed out or not framed out. Here's an example. The bottom three drawers of this cabinet are not individually framed out. Notice that there are no dividers framing out the individual drawers. However, this top drawer is individually framed out. Notice that it has a frame around all sides. These drawers are overlay and they are not individually framed out. There are no dividers or frames between any of the drawers. And these are actually a combination of inset and overlay and they are individually framed out. The first dimension that I like to find when I'm figuring out all of my drawer sizing is my drawer front height. This will be the most challenging dimension to find not because it's difficult, just because there are a lot of variables. To find your drawer front height, you need to ask yourself three questions. How many drawers do I want? Will they be inset or overlay? And will they be individually framed out or not? Using this information, we can figure out our drawer front height availability or DFHA. Definitely not an official term, just something I made up. Basically, this is the amount of vertical space that you'll have available for drawer fronts. Once we have that, we can divide it amongst our drawers. This number will vary based on whether you want inset or overlay drawers. Inset's the easiest to work with, so let's take a look at that first. Here I have a cabinet and I wanna add four equally sized drawers into it, but I want the top drawer to be framed out. One rule of thumb to remember with inset drawers is that you wanna leave an eighth of an inch gap around all sides between the drawer fronts and any surrounding framing. So let's sketch this out. I have a 24 and a half inch opening here and a divider. I've used a one by three turned on its side for the divider, which is three quarter inches thick. So that will take away three quarter inches of my opening space. So now I only have 23 and three quarter space to work with, but I'll also need an eighth of an inch gap above and below the top drawer and between all of the bottom drawers as well. So that's six eighth inches of gap space or three quarters of an inch. So I have 23 inches of available vertical space for my drawer fronts. So since I want four equally sized drawers, I would divide this number by four to give me my four drawer front heights, which is five and three quarter. Now, obviously you can choose to make your drawers different sizes. Maybe you want a deep drawer at the bottom and shallower drawers at the top. You can divide up the sizes however you'd like, as long as the sum is equal to your available space. My recommendation is always just to draw a sketch. It doesn't have to be on a computer. You can hand draw it on notebook paper. Just draw out a rough sketch and make note of all of your eighth inch gaps and all of your framing. Then you can get a visual to easily figure out your available drawer front space, then divide it amongst your drawers. For overlay, the concept is very similar, only instead of subtracting eighth inch gaps, you're going to be adding an overlay. Let's look at this cabinet example again. If I wanted overlay drawers in this case, I need to first determine how much overlay that I want. The framing on the outside here is one and a half inches wide. So let's say that I want the drawer fronts to overlay one inch of it all the way around. You can determine how much overlay that you'd like. So now I take my 24 and a half inch opening and add one inch overlay at the top and one inch at the bottom. So that gives me 26 and a half inches. But now I need to subtract an eighth of an inch gap between the drawer fronts. So that leaves me with 26 and one eighth inches drawer front height availability. For four equal sized fronts, I would divide this by four to give me 6.53125 inches, which is six and 17 30 seconds. This is just my personal advice, so you can take it or leave it. 
but there's a time and a place for exact precision and there's a time and a place for close enough. Drawer front heights are a close enough situation. You want your gaps to be obviously about an eighth of an inch, yes, but it's more important that they're even than that they are accurate. When you get finished building your project and you step back and take a look at it, you're not gonna notice if your drawer front gaps are a 30 second bigger than they should be, but you will notice if they're uneven. So in this case, it's more important to just make sure that you get your gaps even than that you get them accurate. That said, if I divide and I get some weird numbers for my drawer front sizes, I typically will round down to the nearest 16th of an inch. That way it just keeps the math a little bit simpler. So in this case with the 6.53125, which is 16 and 17 30 seconds, I would just round down to 16 and 16 30 seconds, which is 16 and a half. And that makes a lot easier math to deal with than using 16 and 17 30 seconds. But again, that's just my personal opinion and that's how I typically do it. So you can take that or leave it. It just keeps things a little simpler. If you want full overlay drawers, basically you want your drawers to cover the entire front of your cabinets. This is what I did over here in my shop cabinets. In that case, you would take the overall size of your cabinet and subtract an eighth of an inch around the outside. So in that way, it's almost like the opposite of inset, where instead of taking your inside dimensions and subtracting eighth inch gaps, you're taking your outside dimensions and subtracting eighth inch gaps. If you add dividers into the situation, the math pretty well stays the same unless you, for whatever reason, want to expose more of those dividers than your regular eighth inch gap. In those cases, you'll kind of have to customize your dimensions to fit whatever you're going for. In any case, I recommend drawing a sketch just to get a better visual and to make sure that you can note every gap, every frame, every dimension that you need to know. Okay, once you have your drawer front height, everything else is smooth sailing, I promise. The drawer front widths follow basically the same rule as the height, only there's a whole lot less variables, so it's a lot easier to figure. If doing inset drawers like this, you just take your opening and you subtract a quarter of an inch. That way you have an eighth inch gap on each side. If you're doing overlay, you basically measure your opening and add two times your overlay, one overlay for each side. So if you're doing a half inch overlay, you would just take your opening plus an inch. If you're doing full overlay, you take your overall width and subtract a quarter of an inch. That way you have an eighth inch reveal on both sides. Easy as that. So now we have our drawer front height and our drawer front width. So we've got everything we need for our drawer fronts. Now it's time to figure the drawer box. Let's start with the drawer box height. There is no set rule for this, so this is just what I typically do. When determining your drawer box height, you need to again consider whether or not your drawer boxes are individually framed out or not. If they are individually framed out, like in this case, typically I make my drawer box about one to two inches smaller than the opening. So in this case, my opening is six inches tall. I'll make my drawer box between four and five inches tall. Now, if my drawer boxes aren't individually framed out, like in this case, I'll typically figure out my drawer front height and my drawer box height will be one to two inches shorter than that. In this case, my drawer front heights were five and three quarter and I made my drawer boxes four and a half. So now we know how tall to make the drawer boxes, but what about how wide? The drawer box width is actually pretty easy to determine just because it's one of the only dimensions that actually has a rule. In this drawer building series, I'm using ball bearing side mount drawer slides. These are my favorite slides to use for a lot of reasons, and we'll talk about that more in the installation video. The dimensions here are based on using these slides. So in that case, your drawer box width is determined by measuring the opening and subtracting an inch, half inch for each slide, one slide on each side. So if my opening here is 15 inches, then my drawer box needs to be 14 inches wide. Just to clarify, the depth here is, I guess what you might actually call the length, the distance from the front to the back of the drawer box. Typically I make my drawer boxes the same depth as the length of my slides. Now this isn't a hard rule, but it's just what I do. So how long should your slides be? These slides come in two inch increments and common sizes range from about 10 inches to 24 inches long. 
The length of your slide will depend on the depth of your project. So obviously you can't put a 20 inch slide into an 18 inch deep cabinet or it'll stick out two inches in the back. So choose a slide length that will fit into your project. And do keep in mind that if you're doing inset drawers, you'll have to push the slide back from the front edge, at least the thickness of your drawer front. So take that into consideration as well. So once I determine what size slide that I'm gonna use, that's how deep I make my drawer. So if I'm using a 16 inch slide, I'll make my drawer box 16 inches deep. Now at this point, you have all of the dimensions that you need to get started building. So first we determined the drawer front height, then we determined the drawer front width, then we determined the drawer box height, the drawer box width, and the drawer box depth. In the next video of the series, we're going to take these numbers and actually apply them to building the drawer box. If you wanna check it out, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. I know there are a lot of variables to consider, but a quick sketch really helps. I hope this helps make a little bit more sense of how to measure for your drawers. I'll do my best to answer your questions in the comments below and hopefully address some of them in the coming videos. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.